Behind the Beard by Aaron the Mastermind. Yo, yo, what they do, what they do. I am your host, Aaron J. Jackson from Behind the Beard, and we on episode 14, and we are at Brooklyn Vintage and Vinyl, and I'm with the legendary Four Quarter Con. For the people that don't know, introduce yourself. Hey, man, I'm Fourth Quarter Con, coming from Duval County, you know what I'm saying? DJing for six years, man, down here for Rolling Loud. With, hey, Behind the Beard with my boy Aaron. Man, I appreciate you coming out here, man. This is my my homie from Jax, you feel me? Is the, he out here, you Big know what I'm saying? Candy. Big candy. Big <laughs> candy. Yeah. So, what are your plans for Rolling Loud? Like, what brings you down here and shit? I got a DJ for the homie Nate Day. You know, he gave me another opportunity to DJ again this year. So, we're going to do that again. <laughs> nah, that was up. That was up, man. Like, I don't... This guy right here, like, I, how did how we meet, dog? Like, that's that's one thing. Like, I always forget how we meet. I think it was because of Agenda, I think. I think, it was, yeah, it was Agenda. Joe Fresh had a pop-up a pop shot. Shout out to the homie. And we started chopping it up out there. So, it was pretty tight. Still solid dude from, since yeah. day one. Since day one. Like, this nigga right here, every time I go in Jackson, he's the first person. <laughs> hey, Malk, I fuck with you, but he the first person I hit up. You feel me? <laughs> like... First person I hit up. That boy in Atlanta, coaching them track kid. Yeah, shout out to Mike and shout out to him doing the ESPN uh, issue. Right, shout out to that. Shout out to that boy for that. Though. So, what was your upbringing like? Like, you know, growing up in Jacksonville. I came to Jets when I was twelve years old. I stayed in Japan. My pops was in the military, so this is what he decided to retire. So, I had to adapt to that. You know, flow the culture. So. I've been there with since oh three, so it's what twenty nineteen now. So like that's home. See, <laughs> I still can't believe that. I just noticed that like you like you went to Japan like yeah, yeah man. I, military brat life man. But you know, shout out to Pops because he always wanted to like he he was in the military, but he always wanted me to kind of have a foot in the street. So nigga, I've never stayed on base none of that. So you know, it's cool. Other only base I stayed on was. Japan, of course, but Florida, I love it. So. Yeah, man, you know that story remind me of. It kind of remind me of uh, Made in Tokyo in Twenty Four Hours. You know, it's funny. I've heard Tokyo mention Ikego, which is an off base, you know, place in Japan, Yokosuka. I've DM him before. I was like, "Boy, what you know about Ikego?" And he DM me back like, "Nigga, what you know about Ikego?" So that's pretty funny this year. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy, man. Like just. Yeah, I was like, and I know this thing. I'm like, that Japan, bro. I've been trying to go to Japan for years. <laughs> that's hey, that's what you be quiet about stuff. They don't find out unless you air, right? <laughs> Hell yeah, but you know, you do learn something new every day. So how did you get into DJing? Like, what made you like just start DJing? Especially being from Florida, like we known for like you know doing DJ shit. Right, right. Um, long story short, you know my homie Dola, who you, you he raps. You know, I ain't gonna say used to, cause he might jump out the damn hole one day. But uh, we used to throw a lot of shows in Jack, so it's like we always had an issue with trying to find a DJ. So one day I'm just like, you know what, bro? I'm just finna learn this shit. So I invested like 1,300 between a MacBook and a controller, locked myself in for like a summer, you know, and it started from right there. Yeah, like damn, shout out to Dola, man. I ain't know he, you know, helped you out on that, but. Man, that's crazy. Like, you know, coming up from Florida, it's like th- them parties. Right, right, right. Them parties was right. more like you look at a DJ, and that was like the star of the show. Right. DJ always the star of the show. They always get the stereotypes if the rappers ain't in the building. Ain't no hoes, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you shout out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, man. Uh, you definitely started like that. Uh, I was blessed to have the opportunity to run with them because it was like a baton race. Like, Dola already was popping. So, just me being his DJ kind of made people look like, who's this guy behind him? So, and that's always been my boy since ninth grade, but we didn't get really tight till afterwards. So, it's pretty strange. I like that chemistry because, you know, you know, I got homies. But, kind of, like, for me, it was kind of opposite because, like, I was cool with a lot of people in high school, but it was more like, after high school, it was more like I got cool with people. I did like I was like I knew, but it was more like uh I see you and then that's right, it. Right, but then right. I got more close to him after high school. Right. But you know it'd be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You all like I, I run into a lot of people who I used to run with. The funny thing was like me and him, we we used to stand by each other at lunch, but we never really hung to after school. So mm-hmm. for us to get tight afterwards, I mean it was, it was meant to be. So it was pretty tight. Yeah, especially like. 
that relationship you guys have like i like brothers right. you know like like that right. well what would you say that uh influenced you like to you know dj as in like artists and other djs who influenced you into to what you do right now honestly i used to listen to a lot of mixtapes which we all have when we was growing up um joints that used to catch my eye was the so so deaf uh <sighs> So so deaf bass all star toy tapes and stuff like that. Uh, DJ Jelly on camp all of them. I used to listen to how they mix and all that. I used to listen to Gangsta Grills, Drama Bring It Back, Cannon Bring It Back. You know, so just stuff like that. So I've always had an ear for music, but I didn't think I could do what I'm doing now. So it's pretty tight. What made you? How should I say this? What made you like take it more seriously? You know what I'm saying? Like you know, at first you was like. You know and this goes with everything like what made you like be like damn okay i'm not sure if i'm like good but i want to really take this shit to the next level and take this shit seriously because you know djing is, it's an artistry in dj and people don't understand that but what made you take it to the next level it probably had to be uh i can't give you the tour name off top me and dola eddie bravo the guys from felt booby phrase from north carolina we all went on like a month and a half two month tour i put out my first mix on that tour so okay. when it kind of did i didn't think it was going to do what it did on soundcloud but i guess everybody liked it at the time and when i listen back to this day i'm like Ugh, i hate it but you know i guess that's 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 what really made me take it serious because you start seeing people reposting it all the time and then people in public what up Quan? like nigga, i don't huh I was just I'm so used to being a guy in the background so for people just to acknowledge you like the fuck like <laughs> that shit's so crazy I go through it right now like you know how does that feeling feel like you know random people like yo are you Quan like you fourth quarter Quan like because when I be in Liberty City or going around random places be like yo is that Aaron Aaron mastermind I'm like yeah like yeah. what's up yeah. like and that should be so weird it's not weird in a bad way but it's like you're not used yeah, to yeah, it you're not you're definitely not used to it you're definitely not like i'm not mad at it. it's cool hearing it it's just like sometimes it's like nigga do i really know you but it's like whatever but like it's cool though i fuck with it like i'm not mad at it i wouldn't change it i can't quit because it's obviously too deep in the game <laughs> And especially where we come from, you know, in the hood, like, yeah. you know, we like, when nigga come up to us, like, nigga, I don't know you. Right, 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 definitely. It'd be the most random people, like, what's up, Quan? I'll just sit there like, nigga, what? <laughs> but it's tight. Even when I go, like, out of uh, out of state and run into people, people might have listened, click the link, and they like, you Quan, bro? I'm like, yeah, fuck, 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 fuck. Um, Nicole, uh, ZZ, that how you Yeah, that's that? the homegirl. Shout out to her. She pulled up on me in New York. I've never met her until I was in New York that time. Her... I'm gonna remember your name. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, they pulled up on me, and I didn't know them until that time. So that's pretty cool. So it, I, music and just being a creative brings a lot of people together. I noticed that, and it's much smaller than what we think it is. Yeah, that's very true. Because and shout out to Zizi. That's the home girl. You know, we did like the we. I, think, I believe we did the second episode in New York uh, last season. And um, yeah, man, like I noticed with like. Like, you know, we, we from a space that, you know, we not used to that. Like, you know, we used to, like, grimy shit. But, like, going to, like, places like New York, Atlanta, L.A., like, and people know you, it's just, like, it's, like, it makes you, like, you want to, like, go even more harder. Yeah, because I did my first, like, I think I, that was my, I did one set in New York on that tour, and uh, I didn't know what to play. I Thought it was a typical New York. We're going to play Wu-Tang and Jay-Z. I done made a whole playlist of this shit. I get inside. It's nothing but Florida folks in there. Like, I was able to play grind mode. I was able to play piccolo. Just let niggas vibe. And niggas like, bro, I feel like I'm at home in college again. So, that's pretty tight. You never know till you hit the damn play button. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, and shout out to Piccolo. That's the homie, man. But, you know, it's like, when I was in New York, I was, I was there, like, last year. I would say, like, May or, like, around this time. And I was I was in uh what's that club? What's that club in Bushwick? Um uh Kenfolk. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kenfolk yeah, and crazy. Yeah, yeah, Kenfolk is yeah. dumb crazy. Like <laughs> say, <laughs> I ain't was, never seen no shit like that before. Especially New York, dog. Right, 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 definitely. Shout out to Animal House. Them boys throw that third shift party, they go crazy up <laughs> And it's like they was playing City Girls, they was playing like I, I ain't gonna lie, they was playing um what's it what's the art and, and God rest his soul, um 
Oh, they was playing. They was playing. They was playing. I'm, I'm mad at myself because I, I remember. Um, what's the nigga we always look up to? Um, uh, Bankroll Fresh. Yeah, they, yeah, they was playing Bankroll Fresh. Rest in peace, man. And I was just like, they playing South shit more than the, than the hippity hippity hop shit. Like you right. feel me? Yeah, cause I, I, before I had DJ in my set, I I was intimidated. Somebody pulled up at the light, listening to Noriega. What what what? So I didn't know what the hell I was gonna. <laughs> Yeah, New York, man. I, you know, you gotta understand, like the South, like our perspective of New York, we think of like, we always think about like for rats, instance, <laughs> rats and chopped cheese, dude. Yeah, like, like I don't know how to explain, like the the whole, I don't know, like Public Enemy vibes. You yeah, feel me? Like yeah. we think of that, but when we go to New York and go to these functions, y'all actually really fuck with the South, and that's like respect, and and it's like juvenile, like juvenile even talk about like as a recent, like. He didn't get enough respect to like until he went to New York and and they was playing his music like oh damn New York really fuck with me like that you know so right man. you would have thought that would have been because the Jay Z remix we gotta delete that out of our minds though G <laughs> shit man G shit <laughs> you know we came you know the South came a long way with everything you know with art and just everything but what's your approach like coming to a set as in like you know going to your gigs like what what what's your mindset before you get into gig? like do you have a routine like a week before going into the gig mm, usually i might practice a couple of hours before like i'll set my stuff up and just freestyle something usually i go into every set it's, it's not memorizing nothing it's just off the top sometimes you might come across like i might have mixed two songs before you know another night or some shit. but you know you got to be there to hear that but usually i practice you know i you know Take a nap, get me mentally prepared, cause I usually go into sets being dead ass tired, so <laughs> running around all night. But I might light up a little, mm, 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 but you know that's something else. But yeah, other than that, it's freestyle, man. Yeah, people don't understand that you know that 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 before you do all these things and being in a, in a large crowd, you have to mentally prepare yourself because right. a lot all the eyes is on you, right. and people don't get that you know people think oh play that song play that song but it's like nah like <laughs> i gotta play what not only what i want to play right. but i gotta play what the promoter wants me to play yep. so go into that like with the back end of that and because yeah. pe people don't understand people think that you're just a dj right. but it's more behind that right. explain to the people that don't understand that yeah so it's like going into a dj you know the first thing you i want to do be a dj because i want to play what i want to play but, you know, I had to learn myself. You got to read a room. Like, you don't necessarily have to have the whole room going. But as long as you hit somebody in each corner, you should feel satisfied. Because you don't put a smile on their face. They don't, you know, broke a bone, shook a leg, however you want to say you're dancing, whatever. Yeah. But uh, sometimes you might. I remember I DJed a joint here. What was that joint? The it wasn't the forty ounce bounce. It was another joint with uh forty ounce Johnny Cinco Hood Rich King. It was my first time DJing in Miami. I never forget. Um, it was, was it? Was it? Was it when I first met? You? No, it was. Pam. Before. It was you know before. what I'm talking yeah, about, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When um, uh, fuck. What's that? What's that? What's that record? Not record company, but we met through um, cause Malcolm was there, yeah. and it was you there? And I didn't even know of you guys. I just like, damn, these niggas dope. Like, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I forgot the. What's um buddy name? He moved to Orlando. Uh, white boy. The white boy. Yeah, like. Oh, uh, damn, that's the white boy. I forgot his name. I'm so mad. He's staying in Orlando right yeah. now. He got a record store. Oh, Pete. Pete. How I forget? I'm. <laughs> we well, yeah. Yeah, Pete. We, we'll, we'll say Pete. We'll, we'll come Pete. to it. We'll come it's to Pete it. Pete and Pete. I'm gonna fight the dude, man. Anyway, yeah, Pete. Yeah. Shout out to Pete. Yeah, that was Pete, then. Yeah, but um. It was the party, the promoter, he kept pushing the issue that he wants me to play this new record, hottest record, DJ Khaled co-sign. What's the chick who did the joint, eat a booty, eat the booty on Saturday? Damn, damn that's a classic, man. I forgot the name. <laughs> I know you're talking right. about. He kept making me like bring this shit back. Hey, hey, bring it back, bring it back. So I'm like, dude, like nobody trying to hear this shit, man. And he, hey, bring the shit back. So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. So I done brought it back and people like, I, right after that, I was like, you know what, bro? I done did your job. I start playing like SoundCloud records in the club, and niggas that I did know, they was going kind of crazy because nobody really played Broke Boy in a real deal club. So yeah. it's pretty cool. But 
other than that, it's like, like I said, you just got to fill it out. You know, sometimes you might have to play your top 10 records. Sometimes you could play the old records. But my whole thing is just about transitioning. If you could make everything sound kind of like it flows together without somebody kind of raising that, it's like, what the fuck is going on? You should be in the game. So. You know, you know, I've tried DJing, you know, personally, on like behind the scenes. And my only problem is the BPMs. Yeah. That's the hard part. I feel yeah. like out of everything, you know, and... And this that approach is seeing a lot of people all eyes on you, but that's a crazy thing because picking a song, I just feel like picking a song alone is kind of hard right. because it's like you have a whole bunch of songs that you know personally, but it's like at, the, at that moment you don't really know right. because it's like it's so many songs. So talk about like. What is it like picking so like so many songs? Like, what, how do you memorize all them songs that you know that you are approaching while DJing? All right, so you know how everybody has their phone in their hand every day. I literally had like my headphones in and just listen to music all day. So like, what most people you know they see these. Uh, you got your BPMs, you got your keys, all that. So you got a key wheel. It just goes in a circle. So it's like twelve A, twelve B, one A, one B. So it kind of helps you kind of learn how to blend everything together. So it kind of gives you like a like a melody. So it's like you got that. You got then you gotta learn when to cut songs short or if just let them ride. You just watch the crowd based on that. But you know you come across some DJs they'll get right to the hottest verse and cut the shit off, and you're looking at your homeboy like, the fuck just happened, bro? Like, so little shit like that. Um. BPMs ain't never been a problem with me. Like at first, I used to speed the shit up. You know, you would have thought I was from South Florida. I, I have no issue with that <laughs> shit at all. But I had to learn really, like, to learn how to adjust it and when it needed to be adjusted. Like transitioning can go so many ways, from echoing to reverbing to just even dropping on the one stuff like that. So yeah, I feel like I honestly feel like DJing don't get enough respect in the sense of the artistry. Y'all really like us, like honestly, y'all like live producers in my opinion. And like, I feel, I feel like right now we just in this playlist bullshit where people just play songs to the end and try to think, say they're fading it out. You'll be up one minute and next you be sad as fuck. Like, what are you doing, bro? Like, this is a whole playlist. I know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, like that's why with me, I don't claim I'm a DJ and none of that. Like, I let the home, I'm just having fun, and, you know. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with making a playlist like that. It's just, you know, it's just it's just the ones you know, that it's just the ones that that they say they DJs and right. they just pick songs and yeah. and they put it on like like if you if you gonna say you a DJ at least study the art of it because you know I shout out to the boys in Atlanta Trap Genesis Cashy all them as many shows and stuff I didn't did not shows but parties I didn't did with them every time I go up there I always want to like tweak my sound to make everything tighter. Like just going up there back and forth made me want to go back and learn how to scratch even better. You know what I'm saying? So I shout out to shout out to them boys. Yeah, shout out to Trap Episode Eleven. You know what I'm saying? Go check that out too. <laughs> but um, yeah, back to like, you know, people doing the playlist. It's like I feel like this generation, or maybe like the generation after us, they just wanna they see what we done and they see what the the generation before us done. Yeah. And they just want to claim shit off top. And that shit ain't fair to us because it make it more harder right. for us to just succeed. And that goes into rap. That goes into what I do, photography, podcasting, right. and stuff like that. And it's just sad because it's like a nigga want to like succeed in this shit, but y'all making it bad for us. But I always say that, I always say that the ones that keep on doing it, we're going to have a longevity career. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that's why I just get in this shit to be cool. That's all it's about. Either you got a pretty face or you got a bunch of the C word. And I'm not going to use the C word. <laughs> G shit. <laughs> we going to keep that behind the scenes. Yeah. Right, right. right. <laughs> but um, so let's go off topic. You know what I'm saying? Earlier, early on today, I had Quan pick out some records, you know, on something that, you know, meant something to him. And, you know, I was just like. He got some good records, I ain't gonna lie. But this is a new segment that I'm trying to test out. And it's called Behind the Funks. And what we do is I get a DJ or a musician 
go over records and stuff like that and on something that really meant something to him so right now we're going to talk about what um kwan just or four quarter kwan just chose right now so talk about what you just chose right now my first record is going to be juvenile huh and the reason i chose this, this is probably like other than bone thugs and harmony first of the month it's probably the first real deal rap song that i've memorized front to back even the whole album my brother bought me this at eight years old corrupted my mind um I done had soldier rags, bro. I done been in uh, as a kid and drop top cars sitting on the back thinking I was part of the hot boy. Like, this was just something I've always wanted to be part of. But Those were our heroes. Yeah, like, yeah. even the Reeboks, like the right. Reebok days. The, the Reeboks, all that. You switch from Nike to the Reeboks, huh? Like, my boy was just telling you what it was in the projects. You know what I'm saying? Just real deal hood fit tales. Like, Juvenile's probably one of the best storytellers in the game. So. Underestimated, in my opinion. And I feel like. I def I feel like juvenile, you know the shit he talk about on four hundred. I like Ghetto Children. That's yeah, one of my yeah, favorite records. Ghetto Children is one. Ghetto Children is one of my favorite records to this day. I promise. Like juvenile, I feel like we were talking about this earlier. Like behind the camera, like juvenile don't get enough respect on what this generation is today. It's a lot of people like that, but juvenile specifically, he just kind of like broke way into like honestly the Lil Wayne careers and shit like that right 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 definitely definitely so so talk about the next record that you just chose I I see you got that Lil Jon boy Lil Jon nothing's free featuring Ubi one of the best club records if you wake up in the morning you could play it middle of the day whenever you know shout out to Lil Jon because he definitely crafted a sound that's used to this day um how much is like what was that time period that what were you at that time period when it came out? Man, when this song came out, bro, it was like oh I'd be like oh three oh four. Like oh three oh four, bro. I was in middle school, bro. So just like I'm twenty eight now, so I still sing this to the top of my lungs, cause like <laughs> like <laughs> if you ever having a bad time in the club and you don't know what to play, bro, just throw this shit on. But you better have something to come back with. <laughs> G shit for real, for you real. want to be walked out right. and shit like that. Like I don't seen them. Like I was telling Aaron behind the camera earlier, I don't seen the most gangsters niggas like sing this song to the top of their lungs, bro. From the auntie to the thug, the little kid. It's just a song that you hear on the radio, bro. It's just, it's just crazy. So it's crazy. That, it's crazy that she's a gospel singer now. Yeah, like, but you know that's so crazy. Like even like talking about music, like more like um. Kelly, not not Kelly Rowland. What's the other girl that not be obviously not Beyonce, but it was Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, and the other Michelle. Show. Michelle. Yeah, yeah, Michelle. Michelle, like she turned to a gospel singer, yeah. and then you know, it's just crazy seeing like the the superstars around that generation or whatever turn to like you know they change genres, and that's right. that's respect though, like cause it lets you know that you're versatile. So like let's talk about the crowds. Like how do you feed off the crowds, and how do you practice that? Cause you know that's a hard. That's a hard task. It's like it's like the crowd is like fiends. Like they like they want something. Like yo, give me that, give me that. It's like that urge. So talk about how you practice it and how do you like feed off that. Okay. So like, I usually download music maybe two days out the week. So of course you know when you go out, people gonna want to hear the newest shit that's out. You know what I'm saying? So going into a function, I might try to drop something new to kind of like warn people to like, oh shit, ain't nobody playing this because, you know, nine times out of ten, they're going to play the same shit at the same spot. So, I do that. Uh, I'll look around, you know, like I said before, I try to look around, see who's moving, who's not, you know what I'm saying? I try to filter out, okay, how many women in here? How many men in here? But at the end of the day, once you get the women moving, the men start moving. Facts, because without the girls... The party ain't going. Right. So, like, you know, that's parties. But if you're doing shows, you know they're going to want to mosh pit and turn up. So, you got to have your, you know, your, your balance. Of all, yeah, big balance. You know what I'm saying? But I've always been a guy that like the functions over the shows because I just like to show people my skills with everything. Yeah, I feel like nowadays we don't really have enough function like we used to. Yeah, no. Nah, it's either the club and most of the people in the club just look at each other. Just they, high. they just be in the cut just, like, looking at everything, like. Sh- sh- showing off their belts. <laughs> That's it, <laughs> and the one and it's like this is the back end of shit. Like, like them same dudes that just be like, oh, I pulling this girl and then that. They be the same ones to be in the cut, looking at the girl and just right. be like, looking like this, like. Right. But they don't, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, bro, like talk to that girl. We right. playing the funks for right. you know, and it be the ones that just be the girls be dancing together. Right. 
Right, and I mean, I, I know they don't want to walk up on them like that because you know you might get the look or the no, is you good? But hey, yeah, take your chance, bro. One life. Take your shot. Shoot your shot. Right, yeah. Shoot your shot, bro. So let's talk about um, let's talk about what's like. How do you choose a track? Because you know we talked about transitions and stuff like that. How do you choose that next track and what? Because you in the spur of the moment, and you know it's a lot of things in your mind. You know, obviously, yeah. like in them type of situations. Maybe you'll sip your little wine or, you know, I like the wine, but yeah. your little your little drink or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of things going on. So how do that transition? Like, how do you transition into the next song? Because it's a lot of things going on at one time. Well, the one thing that I do, which is no, it's nothing wrong with, I keep my headphones on to try to filter out everything else around me. So it's just me, my mixer, it might be that drink right there. But I try to get, like, a bounce going like I try to go up versus like me, like I said earlier, people up tempo, they'll drop down, drop down. I try to gain it up, hit it up, and then if I hit a ceiling, you know, it might try to be time to change the genre. So let's say I go from a uh, new age hip hop, I done turned niggas all the way up, then I might hit the 2000s right quick, cause they still turn up like, oh, it's the classics. By the end of the night, reggae when people going home, I'm helping you and they dancing. You might go home with some based off some reggae shit. <laughs> you never know. So what makes a song transition? Like whether it's like, um, and you could, hey, you could get the the records from him right here. Yeah. Um, what makes a strong transition um, for a, a a set? Whether it's rap, you know, the old school vibes, or more like the slow jams and stuff. Like what makes a, tra- a strong transition? I wouldn't just say it's time. You just gotta know what to do at the right time. Like, I don't see people sc- try to scratch the diff and just fall on their face, but it's kind of like, like me, I like to use echoes a lot. So it's kind of like, if I time it the right way and it just hits, it hits the hi hats, which my producers know what that is, but like the So I try to align, like basically with the Serato and all that, you align all your needles and stuff like that. So. Like I said, echoes. I might do a backspin, get out of it, or I could just cut and scratch it. It just depends how what you want to do at the moment. You just gotta, like I said, it's all about timing. See, that's what I'm saying. Like I feel like y'all like live producers. Like yeah. you know, it's like the art. right on the right on the spot. <laughs> exactly. Like and you know that really like if you if you really think about it, bro. Like if you go back in time, like the the 80s and the early 90s, they were scratching. But they like they had a whole. We had the vinyl shop right now, and you could see all these little vinyls, and you could only imagine that time when DJs, even the seventies, when they was playing like at Studio Fifty Four and stuff like that. Like it was like the artistry. They had to really get their headphones, and everything was analog, so they had to really like at a certain time they had to put that needle in that certain right, time. Right, 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 right. right. You, you got to just everything like i said cues and all that just so i know when to drop in cut out all that so exactly so like that's what i'm saying like even even in the digital era like i just admire what you do and other djs that i admire i'm just like damn i'm just like damn bro P- and see i'm an artist so it's like i see it like i really do see it that you guys go hard on what you do and it's like a little like it's like honestly it's like a little cult like i feel like the dj culture is like a cult because y'all understand each other yeah and they understand each other and like i we, people actually stick together I, I believe it or not they actually help like my uh shout out to chris mars b ever since i started working with chris that tweet my sound all the way up like chris probably has some of the best transitions i ever heard shout out to bro so like that's what i'm saying like i feel like like I don't know. I really admire DJs because I I be in a club or I I don't even go to clubs. Fuck going out, but when I'm in the function, <laughs> FTO baby, you feel me? We don't go out literally. But um, when I'm in like when I do decide to step out, I go like you know I'll hear a DJ and you know I might not be the best like on the tables, but I could I could really hear yeah. what like what's a good DJ and what's a bad DJ. I'd be so mad when I hear a bad DJ. You don't understand? I'm oh, like, bro, man, I got a spot in jacks we go to every friday i'm trying to get my foot enough but if i hear this how we do it one more time bro i'm gonna scream bro exactly people don't like bro i'd be like bro i don't want to hear that like I'm, I'm tired of hearing this how we do it i'm tired of him poison like hang it up bro. i feel like that's like it's most of them like 
old DJs that don't like understand the the, yeah. the future culture and shit like that. Yeah, they they like they'll play that and then try to throw some new Drake in there, trying to act like they up to date. Come on, bro, you gotta dig deeper down, cuz. I ain't gonna lie, I be wanting to go to the function. I just want to be hearing like some player shit, like Larry June, and some like uh, yeah, they, they'll hit you with that. Like, who's the like you? You should know you're a DJ. You you're meant to break artists. You gotta go look for music. But even with DJs nowadays, I, and that's and this is why it's one of the reasons why I fuck with you because you play the shit that everybody want to hear, not just cater to one crowd. Shout out to the girls because that's what makes the party. But right. sometimes a nigga want to groove, like right. nigga want to bop, a nigga want to you know. You know, dance and right. shit, but it's like you give a versatile angle, and like like I said earlier, sometimes I want to hear Dom Kenny. I live in Miami, or we live in Florida. Like we don't hear like the shit that we want to hear on the West Coast, yeah, and right. that's why like the West Coast they cater to them. They don't they cater to them in New York. They don't cater to like everybody right. else. You feel me? And I feel like we gotta start being versatile with music. Even yeah. like sometimes I want to listen to. Old school funks like some Marvin Gaye. Right. Shout out to me, Marvin Bay out right. here. You heard me? I'm but a, yeah. I'm a, a Boosie Collins gap band. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who else we got? Earth, Wind, and Fire. Like, I, my pops put me on so much of that, bro. I love hearing that stuff. Yeah, man. Like, you know. But, okay, I'm going to ask you this. What's the challenges of being a DJ? Because that's, uh, there's so many challenges out here, man. <laughs> dealing with the promoter, yeah, dealing yeah, with other man. shit. Yeah. Promoter, like I told buddy behind the scenes, bro, this is an everyday hustle. It never stops. Ain't, unless you got a bad like that to retire, it's something that you gotta like invest in full time. Like I'm starting to learn it. Uh, you might do like I told him before. You might be at a, a uh, my bad. <laughs> you might be at a function or an event, and the promoter want to play to the end of the night and don't have your money, and you kind of looking crazy, like you want to hurt the man, but. You got that type of stuff. Uh, I have my moments where, like, I be wanting to stop sometimes. I have my slow months, but like I told you earlier, it's too deep to stop. And I finally got that confidence again to keep going, so it's cool. But uh, you got that. And that's what, and my bad to cut you off, but yeah. Trap said that in episode 11, and, and we were discussing that. It's like, as artists, as people don't understand that we go through our moments. That's why I kind of, I don't know if you've seen the uh, School Book Q interview. Yeah, yes. Yeah, he was like, Yo, bro, like, I didn't make enough album sales. And that shit, like, I'm like, damn. You kind of, I kind of understand you, bro. Like, you get depressed. Like, damn, I want to quit. You can't right, quit because right, right. at the end of the day, you're going to live with regret. Right. So, like, yeah, let's talk about that, bro. Like, that 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 moment. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially where we come from because we, we think bigger. You know, obviously, we love Florida and shit. We want to rep Florida. But we want to go to the New Yorks. We want to go to the L.A. We want to go to the Atlantas and right. go into the bigger scale. Talk about that. Like, what, what keeps you going? What keeps you moving and block that, that negativity and that, that, that mindset of quitting? Yeah. Oh, um, I just, like, I tell people, bro, sometimes you got to just, sometimes you got to just travel. Like, if you ain't doing nothing, just travel to free your mind, bro. Like, do something that's going to relieve whatever you're going through. I had a moment where I didn't want to leave the house, bro. I wasn't really doing no parties no clubs nothing like that it was just like ah, i'm gonna just hang it up and go get a desk job it's kind of like for what like i couldn't walk down the block without come on bro what up like fuck man just let me live my fucking life bro. <laughs> and it's like dog like them niggas that be like yo like it's like yeah. fuck like right. why can't just let me like, <laughs> like i be in public drop a mix drop a mix like nigga no like i'm i don't want to do this shit <laughs> like it's like somebody like for example, you in a crib, you you lock, you sleep, nigga throwing a rock at your window, like bro, leave me the fuck alone, bro. <laughs> and they don't understand. Dog. That's why I told I tell the, the the other people they don't understand. Like, oh, we have the most stressful life of right. like, and I can only imagine when we get to the level that we want to be at in the future. Like, right. it's gonna be. I feel like it's gonna be very stressful because it's gonna be all lies on us, and it's like that attention it's like you have to please the crowd you have yeah. to not even the crowd like your fans it's right. like they fiends it's like they just like yo we want this we want this right. but it's like damn bro let me breathe right, right. so go like talk about that like man if i could tell you how many times i done got deals bring them fourth quarter radio back post them back up online like bro i've been deleted them like that's another thing i was going through a stage like that i deleted every mix off my soundcloud which i still feel bad for to this day 
I had like two, I think I had two, if I'm not mistaken, I almost had like a million plays on them just off of the, one mix had 260K, the first four quarter of uh, radio. Wow. And people want me to bring those back, but it's kind of like, you know, you just got to let stuff die. Like, I'll bring something back, but I just let that die. But uh, before, back to what I was saying. One second. Sorry about this, bro. It's the gas. <laughs> nah, it be like that. It be like yeah, that. Yeah, but um, back to the what you was telling me. What keeps me going? I meant to hit this on the head too. Uh, I know y'all probably had this going on in your city, every other city. But everybody be so worried about being the top. At the top, you could be universal, global. Why were you so worried about being the top of the king of the city? Like, cause then it's gonna be somebody just wanna pull the rug up under you, like. I'm not on that. Like, I'd rather travel, get my name in other places physically. You could do it on the internet, but I'd rather put a face to what you're hearing as well. So. Yeah, like, I'm glad you brought that up because it's like, I tell, you know, I don't know if you get like this too, but it'd be so crazy that people look up to you and it's like, people, it'd be so shocked because it's like, why are you looking up to me? Like, I'm not where I want to be at, but you have like an impact on so many people and right. they just be like, you be telling you you know we be putting people on game with certain yeah. things and it's just like damn like it's like how should i explain this like you give them the game and it's like one ear go out the other but it's not on them they they just kind of they don't know how to deal with fears right. and it's like damn bro it's like you i want you guys to get this and i want you i'm telling you traveling is, is cheap like believe it or not depending on where you go at but it ain't that expensive all you have to do is just Book a flight for like a week and you good. All right, just that same shit you spending on them shoes or whatever you doing, just put that to a traveling, bro. Just get out once in a while at least. Shit, don't matter where you at. Go goddamn an hour away. Shit, <laughs> G shit. Like even if it's like like you said, hour two hours, but you get just a different perspective. Like yeah. like right now, like I'm in the mindset of like I'm tired of see the same thing every day. Right. Now I have to like now I know when I get like that, I have to make sure. That I book a flight to either New York or LA right. to get that inspiration. Sometimes I want to see the different type of beaches. Sometimes I want to go hours away and just right. get my mind right. So when I get back home, I take that energy right. and bring that back here. So, like, what are your future goals for your future? Like, what do you want to see yourself in like five to ten years? I know you have big dreams, so I want you to like kind of like explain that and put that energy out in the world. I feel like. Five years from now, the biggest thing that could possibly happen would be the touring job or a radio station job. Because the radio station for a DJ is money guaranteed. Touring is definitely money guaranteed if you get with the right artist as well. So I could probably see myself. I just got to put that work in and get back on that grind full mode. Like I'm down here doing this rolling loud shit. So, hey, we going to get to it, man. Yeah, shout out to rolling loud because like, they, they came, came a long up. way. Them boys and came up. I'm talking about. From the warehouse, what it was doing, take off, land, or the same people, right? Yeah, yeah. Dope and T. Yeah, Dope and T. Shout out Dope and T, man. Yeah. And Dope and T, shit. <laughs> they used to book what Jacksonville, Orlando, and Miami. Right, definitely, definitely. And I'm proud of him because it's like he came a long way. I understand because like I knew Quan for about three, four, five years, and you know, seeing where he's at right now is just more like it's just like a it's like. Yo, you see your friends, and I have a lot of friends, and I'm just seeing them where they at right now, and it's like they bossed up. Cause I seen the uh, transition, I seen how they just went from here to, you know, you just want to see your friends grow, yeah. and that's why I kind of do this podcast to let you know, let other people know that look, these people didn't come out of nowhere and just right. went from point A to point Z. They actually went from a b c d e f g you know what i'm saying still going through the alphabet still going through the alphabet and they don't understand bro like we go through our shit they we really go through our shit and then and they you know i'll be in functions and shit and i just be like you know what i mean you know what I me mean? i'd be in the cut right and they'd be like aaron bro like i've really fuck with you like i love what you're doing and i'm just like yeah I'm all right, you know what I'm saying? Like it ain't really all that, but for it, all the upcoming DJs or or the DJs that want to take it to the next level, or even the ones that just getting their things started, you have any advice for them to like take it to the next level or just to start? Take a leap of faith, man. Don't be scared. Just whatever you do, just put your foot down and keep going. On, on, don't, don't second guess yourself. 
if you're gonna do it just go like i've always second guessed myself that's probably why i ain't why i want to want to uh, why i'm not where i want to be at right now but i'm gonna get there because now i know what i gotta do so just use that you know you gotta you got the internet is in your hand like people on their phones all day bro you got ig market yourself on ig it's people who DJ that market themselves as, you know, sneaker collectors. You know, they might have a kid, show their kid off. Uh, what else they do? Fashion, you know, you might could DJ and then start doing uh, modeling and shit like that. You never know what it's going to bring you, but just keep it going. That's all I can say. And people don't understand our gener like the generation after us, we don't, they don't understand how hard we had it. <laughs> right. Early 2000s, mid 2000s, how hard it was just to. Shit, even to make a website was like you have to pay a, a what a graphic not graphic designer a, a web designer right. like it's right now everything's in the palm of your hand use right. that to your use that to your advantage because our generation we ain't ha we was the middle age right. so we we had to go through both we had to transition from the computers to the phones like you could do everything on your phone but you ain't got to do shit exactly you could <laughs> exactly it'd be so much shit but yeah man so one last question do you have any well i got two questions do you have anything that you have in the future that we should look um look up to and shit like that in the future um, no, 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 i got a uh, in the near future i say the nearest i got a joint me and trap working on a joint oh man i can't wait i can't wait those are the homies bro i can't wait for that yeah, me and trap got a joint we're working on me and Chris trying to start a station, so we're gonna try to get that cooked up. And of course, I'm gonna try to bring you know the solo stuff. So we're working on that. Um, right. Probably probably add some visuals and stuff to my page finally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but other than that, you know, nothing too crazy right now. You know, we just trying to get a uh, boss up, boss up, residencies, all that, man. More trips, more more. Uh, what we call it? Dinero, mucho guap, mm -hmm. cheese, all that. <laughs> and shit, just the 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 just to make myself happy you know because this music obviously makes me happy so as long as i feel good within myself i'm cool bro and knowing that i've made somebody else feel better or helped them pursue whatever they trying to do i'm cool so so one last question um what's your top three favorite places to go to or vibe at in jacksonville <laughs> man this shit crazy they gotta be like actual nightclubs or just like anywhere in general okay shit. um of course you don't i think you've been to mouth shirt honestly not nah. like oh, we passed by it okay. that time i was there but i didn't really go there well i say mouth shop which is a uniform shop you know what i'm saying because of course that's where i was djing and learning how to dj and all that while he making uniforms for everybody and jordy in the back making clothes for bones war and all that so I say the shop, uh, APB, which is uh, the shoe store boutique. All my homies work there, but I like to go there because you never know who's going to come through and talk this shit, and you never know what you're going to talk about in there. Probably my third, which I, even though I dislike the DJing sometimes, it's birdies because, I mean, that's where everybody be hanging out at. Like, I literally don't have to walk inside. Like, everybody on the strip is kicking it, so it's pretty cool. That's why all we got right now, shit. Other than that, I, I say chomp chomp to get something to eat, but that's folks. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie that that Jamaican spot we went oh, to. Oh man, shout out to Caribbean Sunrise. They try to blackball them boys. Shout out to them. No, oh, they always blackballing like man. the black restaurants for some reason. Man. They do it down here. They they try to say uh they made a fake video saying it was a maggot and somebody trade. It was a, from another Jamaican spot. So, flodging. Fl flodging, bro, to the T. <laughs> so um yeah man that's pretty much it for episode 14 man i'm glad that you came through you came through and holla at me and i i wish you the best for rolling loud and um yeah man i'm, I'm happy my brother in my city and um yeah like uh for the people that's trying to reach you where, where, they, where, where they can reach you at twitter ig four quarter coin man that's all you need right there. I ain't putting my number. I ain't putting no email. <laughs> <laughs> you shout out. So episode 14, Behind the Beard, we out. Out of the